starting with the great name of Allah who is the most merciful and beneficent. Uh, Assalamu alaikum my dear listeners, welcome to Knowledge Sandy Gate. Uh, welcome to another lecture. So in today's lecture we are going to study different parts of speech uh, in our English language. So uh, let us begin our today's lecture. Uh, what is figure of speech? Uh, do not get confused between figures of speech and parts of speech. Uh, parts of speech is uh, is the classes uh, of different uh, words uh, according to their usage but figures of speech a figure of speech is a departure from the ordinary form of expression or the ordinary course of ideas uh, in order to produce a greater effect uh, when we show certain expressions these are not the classes of work uh, but uh, rather these are the expressions when we show certain expressions uh, uh, that produce greater effect so uh, in those kind of expressions, those kind of expressions are called uh, figures of speech. So uh, these are the ordinary forms of expression like they are not common, they are ordinary forms of expression uh, and uh, figures of speech are classified uh, on different basis uh, when we uh, like those based on resemblance uh, are uh, like when we say that those figures of speech that are based on resemblance when we show certain resemblance between two things so there we use simile metaphor uh, personification and apostrophe uh, those based on contrast are antithesis uh, and epigram uh, those based on association are metonymy and synecdoche uh, those depending on construction uh, are climax and anticlimax there are more uh, per part, uh, figures of speech than this uh, but these are the top figures of speech uh, that are used in our literature and that are used in our uh, linguistics so much so starting with simile uh, in a simile a comparison is made between two objects or of different kinds which have however at least one point in common so simile is a part of uh, is a figures of speech we can say that stated comparison like it is an indirect comparison between two things uh, two dissimilar things or two similar things but uh, something is that is so important that those things have at least one point in common so for example when we say uh, the righteous shall flourish as a palm tree so uh, the word as the word like and when we say uh, the word so so these are uh, the words that introduced or simile the expression those contain these words as like so so these uh, those are the examples of simile for example words are like leaves and we are the most abound uh, the, the, thy soul was like a star and dwelt apart oh my loves like the melody so these are the uh, quotations from our uh, literature uh, the next is uh, some common similes like we that we use in our everyday speech or in our day-to-day -day, uh, language as proud as a peacock as bold as a brass as tough as leather as good as cold uh, as cool as cucumber or we can say that uh, as cold as ice so uh, he was as aggressive as a tiger so these are the examples of simile okay one more thing uh, one important thing that the sim uh, comparison of two things of same kind is not a simile when we compare uh, as i have told you before that simile is a comparison of two dissimilar things uh, but uh, this uh, when we compare two things of same kind so that is not called simile the next one is metaphor uh, metaphor we can say a metaphor is an implied comparison between two unlike things that actually have something important in common or a metaphor is an implied simile so uh, this is something so important it is an implied simile it does not like uh, the simile that said one thing is like another or x another but takes that for granted and proceed as if the two things were one so uh, it is a kind of implied uh, simile uh, so uh, it is a type of uh, comparison between two uh, unlike things or two uh, different things and we can call this direct comparison as similes are indirect comparison but metaphor is our indirect comparison we will uh, see it from the example like when we say he fought like a lion so uh, this is our simile but when we say he was a lion in the fight so it is a direct comparison but he fought like a lion is not our di direct comparison so it is our uh, indirect comparison and he was lion in the fight is our direct comparison so it is a metaphor the next is camel is the ship of desert life is a dream the news was a dagger to his heart uh, revenge is a kind of wild justice so all these are a kind of direct comparison so these are called metaphor for example we can say time is money 
uh, or we can say he was a tiger in the argument. So these are the examples of metaphor. So uh, we can have some other examples like variety is the spice of life. This is metaphor and the waves thundered on the shore. This is our metaphor like remaining two are our similes. The next uh, figure of speech is personification. Uh, in personification, inanimate object and abstract notions are spoken of as having life and intelligence. Uh, personification is a figure of speech in which uh, an inanimate object or abstract object uh, is endowed or is compared with uh, human qualities or human abilities. For example, laughter holding both her sides. So laughter is somewhat uh, abstract notion and we are, uh, in, we are endowing this laughter with our human ability. Death lays his icy hand on kings, pride goeth forth on horseback, grand and gay, but cometh back on fool and begs its way. Uh, it is a line, uh, these, these two are the lines of our some poem, uh, some literature poem we can see. So we have uh, more examples like tree, trees danced in the wind, uh, opportunity knocks at the door once. So opportunity is something abstract and it cannot knock but we are comparing it with our uh, human abilities or with uh, like we can say spoken of as having life and intelligence. The next one is apostrophe. Uh, an apostrophe is a direct address to the death, to the absent or to a personified object or idea. Uh, this figure is a spatial form of personification. So apostrophe is somehow related to personification. Uh, person, if, uh, like we can say uh, apostrophe breaking off discourse to address some absent person or thing when we uh, address some something or some person that is abstract or some abstract quality uh, like uh, or some inanimate object uh, or non-existence character when we address to some non-existence character so that one is called apostrophe for example roll on though keep and dark blue ocean roll uh, or we can say, oh death, where is thy sting, oh grave, where is thy victory? Uh, or we can say, oh liberty, what crime have been committed in thy name? Uh, oh judgment, thou art fled to British beast. So these are uh, the lines from our different poems and they are addressing to something, uh, something uh, like we can say some inanimate object or some dead object or some non-existence character. Now, or we can say death be not proud. So here we are addressing the death and death is something abstract. So uh, we cannot see death. Uh, so it is an inanimate thing. So these, uh, these are the examples of apostrophe and apostrophe is somehow related to personification. The next one is hyperbole. Uh, we can also say call it hyperbole or hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole in hyperbole a statement is made emphatic by our statement uh, when uh, when we exaggerate the statement uh, so that exaggerate is called hyperbole the use of exaggerated terms for the purpose of emphasis so when we use to emphasize certain things so that one is hyperbole for example here is the smell of blood still all the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand so uh, here we are exaggerating the term why man if the river were dry i am able to fill it with tears so we cannot fill the river with the tears so we are just exaggerating the term to emphasize certain things the next is oh hamlet thou hast cleft my heart in twain so uh, these are the examples of hyperbole like uh, when we exaggerate something the some extravagant statements or we can say uh, she wept oceans of tears uh, or we can say as old as hills. So these are the examples of hyperbole. The next is euphemism. Uh, euphemism consists in the description uh, in the description of a disagreeable uh, thing or an agreeable name. So uh, we can say that uh, like euphemism is when we uh, avoid using offensive or harsh words. In simple words, we can say that when we avoid uh, using harsh words or offensive words uh, for certain things. So uh, that one is that statement or that expression is called euphemism. For example, when we say he has fallen asleep. That is when we are saying that someone is dead. So instead of using dead as an offensive word, we use there he has fallen asleep forever or he has fallen asleep. Or you are telling me a fairy tale. 
so when uh, we uh, are saying that you are telling me a lie so instead of using this offensive word or this harsh word a lie there you say you are telling me a fairy tale so uh, that this one is called this kind of these kinds of expressions are called euphemism there that when we use uh, when we avoid using offensive or harsh words the next one is antithesis uh, in antithesis a striking opposition or contrast of words or sentiments is made in the same sentence it is employed to secure emphasis so antithesis in simple words we can say that the fact of two things they're being seen or placed together with contrasting effect when uh, when we show certain contrast between uh, some two things uh, but uh, like when we say uh, that we are showing certain contrast effect between two things uh, or two places so uh, that one is called antithesis man proposes god disposes uh, speech is silver but silence is golden so uh, it, these kind of uh, state these kind of contrasts are called antithesis uh, to err is human to forgive divine he had his jest and they had his estate so we can also say that united we stand divided we fall the next is oxymoron oxymoron uh, oxymoron is a special form of antithesis whereby two contradictory qualities are predicted at once of the same thing uh, or in simple words we can say that uh, oxymoron is when opposite words are placed side by side uh, of, well, like when uh, contradictory terms appear side by side so his honor rooted in dishonor stood so here honor and dishonor are two opposite words and faithful unfaithful kept him falsely true so innocent art so cunningly simple uh, she accepted it as the kind cruelty of the surgeon's knife so uh, we can also say that beautiful tyrant uh, so these are the examples of oxymoron the next one is epigram an epigram is a brief pointed saying frequently uh, introducing antithetical ideas which excite surprise and arrest attention so in very simple words uh, the expression uh, that are satiric in nature and that show some satiric scenes so that those one those expressions are called epigram uh, for example the child is the father of man uh, a man can't be too careful in the choice of his enemies uh, fools rush in where angels fear to tread uh, in the midst of the life we are in death uh, the fool doth think he is wise but the wise man knows himself to be a fool so these are the examples of uh, epigram the next one is irony uh, irony is a mode of speech in which the real meaning uh, is exactly the opposite of that what is literally conveyed uh, like when uh, difference when we say the difference between appearance and reality the appearance is something uh, harsh and reality is something so opposite to it so that those kind of expressions are called irony for example a fire station burns down a fire station ca can cannot be burned down the next is police station got robbed or we can say uh, that he is very honest so uh, like in those sentences we didn't mean to say he is very honest rather we are saying that he is very dishonest but instead of saying dishonest uh, there we said he is very honest so uh, those kind of expressions are called irony the next one is pun uh, a pun consists in the use of a word in which uh, in such a way that is capable of more so uh, pun is sim in simple words we can say that use of words in such a way uh, as to suggest two or more of its meaning uh, when we are showing uh, more than one meaning of uh, certain expression so there we use pun uh, like uh, for example is life worth living it depends upon the liver Uh, an ambassador is an honest man who lies abroad for the good of his country so here we are using two objects uh, for different effects so these uh, these kinds are called uh, pun basically pun is a play on words when we are playing with words uh, so this one is called pun the next one is metonymy uh, in metonymy uh, an object is designated by the name of something which is generally associated with it like when we are using a name um, uh, rather uh, like when uh, rather using a name uh, we use an attribute uh, for example the bench uh, the bench is used the bench the word bench is used for the judges or red coats for the british soldiers uh, blue jackets for the sailors the crown for the kings 
so uh, like when we say pen is mightier than sword or like these kinds of uh, sentences or these kinds of uh, expressions are called metonymy in which rather using a name we use attribute the next one is cynic dicky in cynic dicky a part is used to designate the whole or the whole to designate a part uh, like when we say uh, when we use a certain part of things to introduce the whole uh, to introduce the whole thing is called cynic dicky uh, when we use a part uh, to designate the whole for example give us give, give us this day or daily bread so here we are uh, mentioning the food all hands to the pumps or all the best brains in europe could not solve the problem uh, he has many mouths to feed so here we are addressing one part to designate the whole uh, we can also use the whole to designate a part for example when we say england won the first test match against australia so here we are denoting the whole uh, like we are denoting just a cricket match or cricket uh, team Uh, and we are using the whole thing england won the first team match against australia the next one is retorts uh, in retorts an affirmative is conveyed by negation of the opposite uh, the effect being to suggest a strong expression by means of a weaker uh, it is opposite to hyperbole so uh, in simple we can say that retorts is something uh, that help us to draw attention to situation between uh, different situations uh, to draw attention between different situation for example uh, i am a citizen of no mean uh, the next is the man is no fool like when we are saying very clever but instead of saying very clever we say that the man is no fool i am not a little surprised so here i am not a little surprised we means i am not greatly surprised so uh, this means i am not a little surprised so uh, the next one is interrogation interrogation is the asking of a question not for the sake of getting an answer but to put a point more effectively uh, when we put certain points to when we put certain uh, when we emphasize the or question uh, not to get the answer but to uh, make it more effectively uh, so there we use interrogation for example am i uh, am i my brother's keeper Uh, do men uh, gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Uh, shall I wasting in despair die because of woman's fear? Uh, who is here so vile that will not love his country? So these kind of uh, questions uh, that are not asked for the sake of getting answer, but to point uh, out more effectively. So these are called uh, interrogations. Interrogations are also known as rhetorical questions. Okay. The next is exclamation. In this figure, uh, the exclamatory form is used to draw greater attention to point uh, than a mere blat, a bald statement of it could do. So these are kinds of uh, interjections we can say. Uh, what a piece of work is man! Interjection is basically a word, but exclamation is a whole expression. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank! Uh, oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen! So these are exclamations. The next one is climax. Climax is the arrangement of a series of ideas in the order of increasing importance, like a series of ideas uh, that have greater importance. Uh, so the, those expressions come under climax. For example, simple, erect, severe, austere, sublime. So these are climax points. Now, for example, for when we say, "What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculties! In action, how like an angel! In apprehension, how like a god!" So these are a series of ideas, uh, the important series of ideas. So uh, these are called climax. The next is anticlimax. Anticlimax is the opposite of climax. A sudden descent from higher to lower. Lower. It is a chiefly used for the purpose of satire or ridicule. So, for example, here though great Anna, whom three realms obey, though sometimes counsel takes and sometimes tea. So, it is opposite of climax. Here we are done with our figures of speech. Hope you guys are clear. If there is any ambiguity, you can ask me in comment section. Uh, in the upcoming lecture, we will going to study idioms. So, stay tuned for the upcoming video. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, and do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much.